Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Willem Werner speaking, CEO of Deutsche Euroshop, and I've joined here with Olaf Borkas, our CFO, and Patrick Kiss, our head of IR. We're happy to host this call on a nice summer day, at least in Hamburg, um, about the results of the first half of 2015 and some general remarks at the beginning. Talking about the running business and the portfolio, we are pleased to report about an unspectacular but successful period, much in line with our plan and guidance. On the investment market side and for potential acquisitions, we see continued high market momentum with big over-demand and still increasing prices, but I will elaborate on that as a last topic of this call. Operations, let's start with the operations on page two. Looking at the like-for-like -like total retail turnover of our tenants in our German centers, we saw a more or less flat development, to be precise, a minus of 0.1%. Many segments showed a moderate to good growth between 0.7 and, uh, and up to more than 5%. Health was again very strong with 5.3% and also services did well with plus 5.1%. But also food catering and electronics were doing good with an increase of 1.9 and 0.7% respectively. On the other hand, the fashion segment was showing decreasing turnovers, which is what's already visible in the first quarter of this year. Textile turnover decreased by 2.1% and shoes and sports turned out negative with minus 1.7 and minus 1.2% respectively. Let's see what happens if the weather is changing from good to bad when the people hopefully then start to buy their autumn clothes and the turnovers come out better in the next quarter or the second half of the year. Last but not least, the department stores followed with that trend with a minus of 2.4%. Continuing the general positive trend abroad, our centers in Poland, Hungary, and Austria showed a total plus of 1.1% in retail turnover on a like-for-like -like basis. For the Deutsche Jurische Group, that means that the overall like-for-like -like tenant sales were unchanged. Looking at the total tenant sales, that means not like-for-like, -like, we saw also no change in Germany and a plus of 2.1% abroad, so the overall uh, total tenant sales increased by 0.3% for all centers. As a result, with, with not too many changes, the rate to sales ratio stood stable at a level of 9% for the portfolio. The trend of general lower frequencies in uh, frequency developments in Germany, not only in the Deutsche Euroshop shopping centers, remains visible. However, up to now, with rather stable overall turnover developments. For the Deutsche Euroshop uh, shopping centers, some might be attributable to some extraordinary effects that we've reported on earlier like the heavy construction uh, ongoing or the inglorious uh, Pegida demonstrations in the surrounding of our centers, but there's also definitive changing customer behavior. Let's come to the financials. Looking at the latest results of Deutsche Euroshop, the numbers generally come out as well, uh, in well and as forecasted. With the unchanged composition of the shopping center portfolio, the numbers are like for like comparable and show a continued more or less straight line development. From a top down perspective, revenues grew by 0.9% and NOI by 1.3%. EBIT remained on the level of last year's first half. Net finance costs decreased by minus 12%, EBIT moved up by 7.1% and consolidated profit by 7.2%. Let's now start on page three with the P&L in more detail. As just mentioned, revenues were up by 0.9%, reflecting here mainly also the low inflation that has uh, now been present over quite some time. Operating and maintenance, uh, sorry, operating and management costs were down by 2.9%, mainly due to lower running maintenance costs and management costs, which are slightly cyclical over the year. However, they are normal levels. All those changes led to an overall increase of the NOI of 1.3%. The other operating income decreased very slightly by 0.3 million euro, whereas corporate costs increased by some 1.1 million euro. But the reason is the highly pleasant positive development of the stock price of Deutsche Euroshop in the first half of 2015 led to the fact that the provisions for the stock price related long-term incentive plan for the employees and management, which started back in 2010 and expired in June 2015, had to be increased. This is an exceptional and to that extent a one-off item. 
In total, EBIT came out with 88.2 million euro, which is with minus 1.0, uh, sorry, minus 0.1 percent, slightly lower than previous year. At finance cost of now 28.3 million, decreased due to the lower interest rate cost of 1 million euro, and due to the positive effect from a P&L relevant swap in the amount of 2.3 million euro. The equity results increased by 0.4 million euro, and the results attributable to the minority shareholders increased by minus 0.4 million euro. As evaluation of our shopping centers is conducted only once per year, and at the end of the year, the valuation results of the first half of 2015 includes only the investment costs. These investment costs amount to 2 million for the first six months and are lower than last year's level. However, these investment costs occur rather stochastically over the year and may vary quarter by quarter. On a side note here, for the next shopping center portfolio valuation at the end of 2015, we have decided to change the value and have chosen an international experience and a renowned valuation firm. After more than 10 years uh, with the same value, we considered it uh, the right time and appropriate just in the normal course of business and uh, very important also getting a good benchmarking of the valuation process. So all in all, the EBT was up by 7.1% or 4.1 million, now standing at 61.5 million euro. With taxes at a level of 11.8 million euro, approximately 800,000 euro higher than last year, consolidated profit increased by 7.2% to 49.7 million. For our key figures, which you'll find on page four, that means the following. FFO per share increased by 4.6%, to 1 euro 14 in the first six months after 1 euro 09 in the first half of 2014. Undiluted earnings per share increased by 7% from 86 to 92 cent, and on an April basis, the undiluted EPS went from 91 cent to 95 cent, a plus of 4.4%. After the BNL, let's now come to the balance sheet on page five. Looking at it and comparing it with year and 2014 figures, one will find only small changes as there were no new acquisitions or divestments in the portfolio. The total equity decreased by 50 million, also due to the dividend payment, uh, payment at the end of June, and we saw a slight increase in the financial liabilities, up 31 million euro, which now stand at 1.46 billion euro, and we saw an increase of the deferred tax liability, a plus of 10.6 million euro. On the other hand, there was a decrease of 13.9 million euro in the other liabilities, resulting mainly from the lower negative market values of the existing swaps. Correspondingly, our equity ratio moved down a little, which is typical in the mid of the year. Um, it moved down to 49.5% 40, compared to 50.1% by year end. 2014. Nevertheless, LTV ratio remains at a moderate level of 41%, which is one percentage point higher compared to the end of last year. Total asset increased by 12.8 million euro, which equals 0.4%, mainly driven by higher liquidity. Let's now come to the loan structure, which you will find on page 6. The current average interest of our 1.46 billion financial debt stands at 3.76%, while loans have been an, uh, have an average maturity of 6.1 years. The loan due this year has already been extended, as expected, at a federal interest rate of just slightly above 2%. On page H, you can see the maturity profile of our loans in more detail. And as you can see, next year, some 80 million of consolidated loans and another 145 million of unconsolidated loans, of which half account for Deutsche Euroshop are due for refinancing. 145 million refinancing has already been agreed with the banks and is ready for interest rate fixing. We come now to the bridges, starting on page eight. Very easy to follow the revenue saw 0.9 million increase or a 0.9% from 99.7 million to 100 million and 100.6 million euro. This is mainly due to the indexation of the base rent of the leasing contracts and some little higher turnover rents in comparison of the first six months of 2014. The bridge for the financial results you'll find on the next page. 
interest costs were 1 million lower than last year, uh, and as part of the financial result, the at equity result increased to a level of 10.8 million euro, that is 400,000 euro higher compared to the same period of last year. As well as the minority, report, uh, minority profit share was also 0.4 million higher. An increase of the value of the P&L relevant swap contributed another 2.3 million to the positive change. So overall, the net cost came out 3.3 uh, million lower than in the first six months of 2014, summing up now to 24.7 million euro. Let's jump on the next page to the ABT bridge. EBT moved up by 4.1 million to 61.5 million euro. Value Asian contributed 1.2 million, and the remainder resulted from the increase in the operating profit of 2.9 million euro, or 4.8%. Last but not least, the profit bridge on page 11. Profit after tax increased by 3.4 million to 49.7 million, and value of Asian contributed 1 million euro to that change and the increase in the operating profits accounted for a plus of 2.4 million euro, or 5.2%. Coming to page 12, our forecast. Looking from today's point of view, we are satisfied with the results for the first six months, which are in line with our guidance for 2015. For the full year, we expect revenues to be around uh, between 201 and 204 million euro, and EBIT between 177 and 180 million euro, an operating profit before valuation in Texas of 126 to 129 million euro. For the FFO per share, we expect to be in the range of 224 to 228 euro, and on the basis of such stable performance, we should well be able to pay a dividend of 135 per share in 2015, just as we have communicated before. After the numbers, let me now come to extensions or investments. First, let me start with the internal growth. In our most active shopping center with respect, to, with respect to development of new areas, the Phoenix Center in Hamburg, the construction and leasing activities um, are running according to plan. As it looks, we'll open the new mall in autumn, just as planned, and we'll complete this extension with, uh, the extension with a new food court opening in spring next year. At Castle, we have the positive news. We have received the building permit for the implementation of the food court with some 450 square meter leasable area. Already four out of nine food concept uh, lease contracts have been signed, and we are happy to provide such modern and launch type gastronomy area to our customers, hopefully end of this year, uh, but latest early next year. For our shopping center Galeria Baltitska, we are still working on to reach the effectiveness of the environmental permit as an important prerequisite for the building permit procedure for the extension. We hope to be able to decide on the final investment in 2016, potentially 2017. As stated in, Q, in the Q1 call, we'll hold our Deutsche Euroshop real estate summer next week in this beautiful city of Gdansk, and those of you who have signed up for the event will have a chance to view this nice and cash-producing asset First hand, and a side note here, by the way, bring your credit cards, please. Let's come to the external growth potential. It's a platitude, but to set the picture right in which environment we are working today. The market is still very hot. Deal flow is high, almost doubled compared to the first half year of 2014. Interest rates remain low, even though the extreme levels from the end of Q1-15 seem to be over. And the risk appetite of investors is visibly increasing, surely uh, because of the absence of high-quality investment possibilities. While the sales agents have counted close to 10 shopping center transactions in June, <coughs> only three deals have been in deal size. Deal Deutsche Euroshop is preferably looking at, that is, big shopping centers with an asset value of more than 100 million euro. My remark from last time seems to prove right that the market now uh, comments on potentially higher risk profiles of some transactions and some current offerings too. However, as communicated in the last months, the Giro shop is, also in this environment, seriously looking for high-quality investment opportunities, which are unfortunately very limited. Given the current market condition and return expectations on the equity and debt side, we are convinced that investments, investments can be feasible also long-term. Again, again, the key criterion for us is to focus on quality. 
In the first half of 2015, we have been actively analyzing a number of deals and assets in the market in Germany, Austria, and Poland. All in all, we eventually placed one bid for one shopping center in Germany, but as life is, unfortunately, we were not successful in becoming the preferred bidder, but we'll continue to look on any new and realistic opportunity for Deutsche Euroship coming to the market and bid where we think it's reasonable and feasible. So far, my presentation for the first half of 2015. Thank you for listening so far, and I'm happy to take your questions now. The first question comes from André Remke of Bader Bank. Please go ahead. So, Werner, you already referred to the investment strategy in these markets. Probably more in particular at the moment, um, you, you mentioned the bit you were not successful. Um, are you willing to give us some comments, further comments on that, maybe with regard to, uh, yeah, well, the so location as a part of Germany and especially in terms of yield assumption. So what was the potential delta uh, to the closing if this has been happened? <laughs> Let's start with the last point. Um, Probably we'll never know what the delta is. You know, um, this deal is still on the market. We are not preferred bidder, but it's not closed. At least we have no, uh, we haven't seen any press release. Um, and in most of the times, if not an open-ended fund is buying such a deal, they are uh, obliged to publish the price. We probably will never know what the gap would be. Uh, but as we weren't invited to, uh, let's say, the second round, it, it probably was not uh, peanuts. Uh, but it's wild guessing whether it's a big, uh, big difference or not. Uh, I mean, comment-wise, it was an eastern part of Germany, a nice city, but we cannot comment further because with any deals that we uh, bid on, we have to sign uh, non-disclosure agreements, which is my standard practice and I think acceptable. So we could not even mention that we were bidding on that deal, uh, but probably, I mean, the information I gave uh, to you uh, is sufficient on that point. What I said in my um, yeah, call last time, um, we bid what we think is market prices, and the market prices are more or less reflected in what the agents are, are quoting as prime uh, yields for A and B locations. and. Um, we don't have this fixed uh, percentage rate in our back of our minds. We look at the cash flow, we look at the long-term assumptions, uh, we make up our minds, and then, of course, we come to net initial yield. Uh, we think we are able to bid the published prime yields. If it goes beyond that, and I stated that earlier, also in the General Assembly, um, if there are some wild bidders out there going further than that, we, we see that we also come out second, but that must not be the case in any any new deal. Yeah, but I yeah. think we bid uh, what market considers market, um, because if there are some very high bids on specific um, deals or, trans or or shopping centers, uh, they do not really become in the same second the new market price. Yeah, I mean the agents and the ones who are professionals on that they look whether this is an exception or whether the trend goes further. Um, but one comment would be, yes, that the prime rates have come down also a little bit again between first quarter and second quarter, probably by 0.1%. But we are at the top of the cycle most probably, and uh, so the changes are rather small at the moment on a very high level. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps, and sorry that we cannot comment which centers it is. Yeah, sure. Um, completely clear. Um, um, a follow-up on that topic um, or on your strategy as um, the CEO position changed and also part of the supervisory board, so probably on two points. First, um, do you have the same view on, on potential disposals from the portfolio? And uh, Just to make it clear, are you thinking about any kind of action here uh, to take profit from the, from the strong investment market? And the second question on, on that, on the investment market or on your strategy in these markets. Um, well, you refer to, to yields. Um, probably any, any chance, uh, to, to become more successful in, in other locations or in, in terms of size of the center. I think if I get it right, you, you mentioned centers, um, which are, uh, for you above 100 million, is there a potential to go uh, into into other categories? So these are the two follow-up questions. 
Yeah, I mean, with regard to strategy, um, I mean, we are looking in the countries that we are at the moment, um, and we would include the Czech Republic, uh, as I think um, I do have very good know-how of the market, uh, starting now really off with the CEO position. Um, and I think the markets are big enough. There is some deal flow, and we need to see that we get our share there. Um, I hope that answers the questions. With regard to the type of shopping centers, I mean, I'm, I love to do bigger ones in the region of 200 million and plus, where they are very dominant in more populated regions or cities, I would say. But we would do also some smaller ones. I mean, the one we were not successful was a little below 100 million, in, but in a nice city in a very good location. So it's a, it's not just the price; it's always um, it's a unique asset uh, all the time. You would have to look at. But that would be the time um, that we go from. I mean, not below, let's say, 15,000 square meter GLA, um, but we would. I would also love to do very big ones if they come to the market and have the quality. And um, for, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, and uh, disposal-wise, I mean, we are quite so, so far quite happy with uh, with our portfolio. I mean, we have our stars, we have our working houses, and on average, I think we have a very good portfolio effect and develop at least with the German market at the moment. Uh, the big problem that we have is whenever we sell uh, a shopping center that we have uh, for many years on our books uh, in a hot market, um, we would have a huge tax burden on that. And then the question would be, do we have a new shopping center where we at least could invest the cash after tax? Yeah, there is a loss. Um, and the other thing is if we would return that through a special dividend, I mean, it would be even a tax issue then on, on the investor side as well. So from an investment point of view, um, I, no, I, I wouldn't take that into account in the near future. Never say never, uh, but we're quite happy with our with our size. I rather want to grow and shrink. Okay, that's clear. Uh, so the very last question on, on your guidance. Uh, probably is not the time to, to talk about the guidance for this year as well as for next year. But, um, if I calculate the first half result FFO of 114 and given the potential refinancing effects or also the, the small, let's say, contribution for Marburg uh, expansion in autumn, uh, why should uh, the, the, the upper end of the FFO range of 228, um, it's already a done deal, isn't it? Um, well, we or or, or do I miss I any any things in with regard probably to taxes or whatever? No, we communicate a range, and I think the range is rather small. It's 1% by turnover, and if you go down the lines, the top lines is probably 1.7, 1.9%. I think the range is... Um, it's, it's a miracle if you really could predict it. We have some special effects that usually come at the end of the year, um, and uh, like that we look at the tenants that probably have not performed that well. Maintenance is really checked double then at that point in time. So there might be the one. As I said, some things are a little cyclical, yeah, and the operating costs were a little lower. And with, with the preciseness of our guidance, uh, every 500,000 up and down makes up uh, one, one cent up and down. Yeah, and I don't want to be over uh, uh, over precise here because it's probably then too much guessing. Okay. But Thank you very much. The guidance that we are in, and um, yeah, going forward. Okay. I mean, our, our business model is easy, but it's not that easy to say it's times two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Kai Klose of Berenberg. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, very good morning, gentlemen. <clears throat> Just a quick one. Um, in talking uh, regarding the tenants and the extensions currently here in Hamburg and uh, potentially in uh, Dansk, what do you hear from the tenants when you um, propose that? Um, what is the general um, willingness to expand to take up more space? Or when you talk to new tenants, what, what do, you, do you hear from them? Are there new formats coming to the markets? And um, what is the perception? Thank you. Yeah, I think the general... The leasing market is difficult in Germany at the moment. There's huge new volumes coming to the market, new factory outlet center, new shopping centers. I think last year it was 11, this year it will be 9. Um, and uh, there are extensions, there are refurbishments, so there's no lack of leasable space. Um, so it's rather a lessee's market in those days. 
But still, um, I mean, when we decide to do such uh, such extensions, we have done thorough sorts beforehand, and uh, of course, in-person ECEs checking really very detailed with the uh, with the lessees uh, before we take that decision. Um, usually, and uh, we receive good receptions in Harburg. We, I mean, uh, we just decided on uh, on Kassel where we set ourselves a benchmark to have at least the four uh, concepts signed before we start the construction, which is almost half uh, half of the size. And Gdansk, is, which is a little further down the road, and um, I hope you are there next week, but you will see it. this is a really booming center. It's number one in the region with more than two million uh, p uh, people overall. Uh, so I think uh, it will be a big extension, um, and we'll try to get any concept available in Poland, but we think we can manage uh, to, to fill that. But it's not a hot lessor market, it's rather a lessee market. Mm, and the, um, the previous concept of uh, 10 years, uh, with a maturity of 10 years, and um, uh, fixed is still, still, still the case, or do you see some changes to, towards more flexible uh, tenants being more favorable for the tenants? In general, that's the case that we sign that we have the big players that want to have the one or the other exception. Okay. And the last question on the Phoenix Center, what is the pre-letting rate at this stage? Um, yeah, we need to compare when we talk about the mall area, yeah, because we have mall area and new food court area. The mall area is uh, now roughly 60%, uh, but it's not unusual that uh, uh, such contracts are signed rather late. Oh. Um, and uh, with the food court, it's still much lower. Uh, it's around 20 percent. All right. And uh, very last question: When you mentioned the 15 million um, of investment uh, to be taken by Eurosoft for the Phoenix, what is the split between mall and food court? Mm. <sighs> roughly. I mean, yeah, roughly half. Uh, half, half. Yeah, yeah uh, one third to a half. You know, we, we look at this overall and do not say whether the wood code calculates better or not. So it's sure. yeah, one third, rather one third, yeah. All right, many thanks indeed. But um, I'm, I'm very sure that we lease out Harburg full. If you, if you try to guess what's the risk in there, uh, I mean, it's just fully leased if it's fully leased, but uh, I would surprise if we are not fully leased when we open up the various areas. Perfect. Thanks, Edith. Next question comes from the line of Baudwin Sean of Kempen & Co. Please go ahead. Good morning. Um, I, I had two questions. Um, uh, first of all, um, you indicated you will change the uh, the, uh, the valuer uh, for the portfolio. Uh, take an internationally renowned uh, valuer. Um, yeah. Obviously, sounds like a, a more uh, a UK uh, value or a more uh, a value that, that takes UK valuation practices into account. Um, I don't know if you can indicate, first of all, uh, who would be on that list. Um, not that that is of much consequence, it's more the method. Uh, and secondly, um, if you take the normal valuation approach that we often saw in, in Germany, it was more based on long term, uh, whereby in the UK they look uh, more at, at latest transactions, so they, they follow the, the market more closely, resulting in, uh, in bigger changes uh, in value, um, more volatility. Um, and in that respect, uh, looking at the um, the process of this <clears throat> particular center that you missed out on. Um, looking at the market today already, what could you say that taking this or such a different approach into account could do with uh, the value of your portfolio? Are we talking plus 5% perhaps? I don't know. Maybe you could uh, comment on that. That's the first question. Sorry to be a bit lengthy there. And yeah, the second question is, um, and you already uh, elaborated on it, I, 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 I do recognize that, but where could you find new growth initiatives? I mean, is it uh, in the portfolio? You indicated we have workhouses, we can work on certain assets. Uh, should we expect further projects to be announced? Uh, would you change your opinion on the debt? I mean, uh, I believe you previously said we're not looking to refinance ahead of schedule that costs us money. I mean, it's MPV neutral, but would you now, I mean, considering it's more difficult to buy stuff 
consider that, or uh, do you expect it will mostly be uh, driven by just regular like flag rental growth, and that I mean moving your FFO uh, going forward? Thank you. So let's start with evaluators, um, and I will just release it here. It's John Fleng Lazalle, and we have uh, done a short beauty contest um, because our most important, or one of the most important. Um, drivers behind here was that we also got very good retail know-how in it. And uh, we, we asked the big ones, and uh, I don't know whether they are more UK or not, if they are international, they are globally working firms by now. Um, I would not engage in any wild guessing whether uh, our portfolio comes out much higher, higher, the same. Um, I wouldn't expect it to come out lower, to be honest. Uh, we had a ra uh, still conservative approach, and we will be conservative, there's always room um, to uh, to judge on a, on a given valuation, but we'll wait up the results and we just have signed them up, they will give us known, get now the data and we'll know by end of year and communicate to you all then uh, when we release the preliminary numbers. Um, sorry, but I think it doesn't make sense to have any, any uh, guessing on numbers here out. Yeah, I understand that, that's, that's fine. Yeah, and, and by the way, I mean, even the old um, um, valuator that we have, I mean, they all do uh, discounted cash flow models. Uh, they derive their discount rates a little different. They have to uh, benchmark them against the recent transactions. And so there's no huge difference in the principle how you approach it. Um, and we'll see what the outcome is. Yeah. And uh, come to the next point. Um, I mean, you asked also on the um, on the center where we were bidding, and uh, in relation to the value, I tried to answer it as I understood the question. I mean, of course, we got an opinion uh, from this value on that one also. Um, it might happen if you in those days um, buy something very nice uh, that you buy a little above what your value is saying, uh, saying at that very moment, but this will not be dramatical. Um, but it, 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 there's no interrelation between the new value and the acquisition that we were looking at. It's a principal decision that when we have quality, that we'll go for market prices as, um, as we consider them right and not more than having fixed percentage rates in our mind. Look again, pros. Um, I think the route is, of course, to find any, uh, bits and pieces in our shopping centers where we could do so, like a little bit in Kassel now, like in the Phoenix Center, a big one in, in Gdansk, which is rather midterm if you look at the timing, um, but developments take some time, and I think the rest will have to come when we talk about real growth from external growth, uh, and, and the rest would be really uh, growing with the market with rental growth, and hopefully as we have done over the last 10 years, a little above inflation, I think over the last 10 years we managed to do 0.5% above market. Yeah, but then the leasing market needs to change a little again also. Okay, thank you. Maybe one question then on the uh, the change in appraiser. Um, uh, yeah, that, I understand there will not be a huge difference in uh, in the way the devaluation is, is, is done with respect to discounted cash flow. A similar principle, of course. Uh, then, of course, you said it already, but what, what would be then the reason, um, uh, very simple, to change this, this value or is it to get it the portfolio to get the valuation more internationally recognized is it because of criticism on the previous valuer by investors what 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 triggered it exactly no i think i mean i am new on the board here and um i think it's a good business practice to rotate your valuators i mean uh, some competitors of us do it they switch uh, back and forth every three year and i think uh, it has been long and has been stable we believe uh, it's a conservative value, but you can live with that value. But for me, it was just rotation, and to see up to 10 years, have a new opinion on that. It's a benchmarking. It's, okay. it's really just straight going forward. All right. Thank you very much. Next question comes from the line of Georg Kandas of Bankhaus Lampe. Please go ahead, sir. Hey, good morning. So um, I have a question here on... on on, on the development of rents on the quarter to quarter, there was a decline against Q, Q1, I think partly uh, due to uh, the Easter season. 
But uh, there were some, obviously there were some other reasons. This is also to do with this construction work going on and uh, with the trend reward in already in Q3. I mean, we have in the second quarter some heavy construction going on in Harburg. Uh, we haven't analyzed it uh, and, and, and in Wuppertal also, that's it. Um, so, uh, no, in Wuppertal it's not construction, but uh, we have construction going around the center, not in the center. So, um, we are again uh, at such small differences that you would have really dipped, to, uh, deep, uh, dipped deep into that. Um, to see uh, in a center where we, for example, in Hamm, yeah, we now move the uh, the Saturn from one end uh, to the other end of the mall uh, to give him a new space, a little smaller space. But we had Intersport who wanted to have more, uh, um, let's say, more uh, space. Two big tenants, and they are now um, uh, having, let's say, um, um, some space that that is not really paying rent for some point in time as part of the deal. So it's it's rather homothetical or a very very small amounts that we are talking about here. And then another question here. Uh, I think previously I had in mind that the decision on Danzig would be taken this autumn. Autumn. Uh, did I get it right? Or is it I, I'm sure wrong? if you follow that up, um, as it is a development project, there um, have been I'm sure uh, dates communicated earlier, uh, and even here, as I said, to 16 or to 17, we now wanted to take a decision. There are various decisions to be taken. First of all, we have to prepare the site. We have to relocate an underneath, underground stream. There's a building permit. There's construction going on, and we will take a decision whenever we have that permit. And uh, then there's another second step uh, realization decision really to start the construction of the center. Um, so, yes, we are a little later here, which is not untypical for development. It's not bad for the development, but, of course, um, you want to have it as early as possible. The third question I have is on Dessau. Are there any thoughts um, yeah, um, regarding the neighboring space, which will be free from Karstadt? Yeah, as you can imagine, as direct, we're not only neighbor, but the, the buildings are interlinked and open to each other, and we have very close relations. So we'll openly talk with them on any reasonable solution. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star followed by one. The next question comes from the line of Manuel Martin of Otto Seidler. Please go ahead. Um, hello, gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Weiner. Um, two questions. Uh, one question um, coming back to um, to the expansion um, by acquisition. Um, wouldn't you prefer to to look rather abroad for new shopping centers than in Germany? If I have a look at uh, the the growth in um, like for like retail turnover um, abroad, seems to be more attractive. Um, yes, it's slightly higher depending where you're looking, but if you look at the countries we are in, in Austria, it's a little bit, a little flat like in Germany. Uh, there's a little more going on in Poland, but also not too much to be honest. There's also a rather more satisfied market. Um, and the, 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 the issue is supply. Yeah? I mean, there were some deals in the Czech Republic that was looked at last year, and I would love to look some, uh, to something here also this year and next year. Um, and, uh, I mean, we have to be, as I always said before, and I think my president also, we have to be opportunistic, um, and I would look in all of those uh, uh, countries. Yeah. And in Hungary, um, when we have bigger growth rates, but, I mean, they had a rather downturn due to political issues also, as you all probably know, and, of course, now they recover uh, from that lower level and show a little higher, uh, higher percentages. Uh, I would love to buy it, or as I always said before, um, our joint venture partner there, but whether this happens, we'll have to see. It's a closed end fund. It's rather complicated. Mm, Looking okay. further abroad, of course, you see higher growth rates in Italy, in, uh, in Spain, in Portugal, uh, having had the same effects like Hungary, yeah, for other reasons, of course, and, and the growth rates are higher there. But um, And I will look in, in many markets just to keep ourselves informed and maybe mid to long term to think about something, but pricing there is also what we hear and see tough already. Yeah, it's, it's, again, a question of relative returns. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, second uh, little question. Um, maybe could you could you remind us again what uh, what will be the additional rent contribution of uh, of uh, the new mall area of Phoenix Center, please? Yeah, it's one point one point eight million. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. The next question comes from the line of Thomas Martin of HSBC. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, some follow-up questions on the topic uh, acquisition and valuation. Um, let's start with uh, the valuation side. You said, uh, and we discussed it already, that you changed the, the valuer. Um, could you remind me what the net valuation deal was from your former uh, appraisal ferry? If I remember correctly, I think it was almost 6%. And 97, yeah. Yeah, so, and how does this fit to the um, reported market yield for prime shopping centers in Germany, data provided from, let's say, from Crossman Wakefield and the other appraisals? Would, I think the, the yield there is more between 4.5 to 4.6%, uh, what I've seen in recent reports. So there's a big delta, and uh, I think you as you, you consider your portfolio mostly as prime. So what, in your view, justifies this big spread between the market yields reported from the agencies and and uh, your former value? And is this not really the, the reason because you, you plan to change the value? That was my, would be my first question. Yeah, let me ask uh, uh, the last question straight. No, that's not the reason. And if you hear the 4.5 that you mentioned, that might be now reported, I think, from John Slang and their report 4.4, these are the centros. Yeah, these are the number one top shopping centers in Munich downtown, or I mean Munich just as four shopping centers. Um, and uh, we own very good quality shopping centers uh, with a spread, call it, from... Dessau to our Dresden downtown, uh, and there are differences. I mean, for the B cities, for prime shopping centers, it's 5%, uh, and um, if you talk about, for example, uh, Dessau, it's probably a B minus city again, and uh, you look at demographics, you look at a lot of other things. So, uh, and we have uh, Hungary in it, and so on also. Yeah? So if you take the overall effects, um, we, we think we are valued conservative, um, but we didn't do it on purpose to just show one of item here in the valuation. And on the other hand, we do not own just uh, – we own prime shopping centers, but not in the prime, prime or locations over Germany. Okay. It's not, they are not all Frankfurt downtown. They are not all Hamburg downtown and so on. Yeah, that's clear. That's clear. Yeah. But, and, but and this is something that you probably could look at uh, because it's – if you take our portfolio and say, okay, cap rate is 4.5 uh, multiplied, you will find an, on the back of the envelope calculation a huge delta. We would love to own just such shopping centers for 4.5%, but we do own very good ones, but in other locations. Okay, okay. Um, then the, the other point on, your, on the acquisition side, um, Regarding your investment criteria, uh, I think you are still relatively conservative. And if I remember correctly, uh, in the past you said that 5.5% roughly is your minimum uh, net initial yield, roughly, maybe in the meantime a bit less. But how does the the low cost of debt, I mean, the marginal cost of debt for you now is around 2 2.1% for a 10-year loan. How does this affect your initial yield uh, requirement, I mean, uh, it has almost halved the, the marginal cost of debt. I mean, when I look in your debt maturity profile, you have loans with average cost of debt uh, above 4%, so you could easily justify a much lower initial yield uh, if the rest of the parameters for such an asset are correct or are fine for you. How, how, how do you feel here? I mean. Yeah, I mean, you're correct, and I tried to communicate the fixed 55 and it was 6% for for abroad. Uh, they are not, they are gone, you know. We look yeah. at it, and, and they were long true because um, 
the financial data from the market, like debt costs, like equity market, they always led to that amount. They were not written here in stone. Uh, just because somebody thought about it 10 years ago, they were always the result um, that we had to ask for, look for, to get some accretive um, FFO effects or at least uh, stay tuned uh, on the FFO effects. But you, you, you're right, the time has changed. And I, uh, when I mentioned before that on the center we were bidding, uh, that we were uh, bidding market uh, yields, and market yields are 4.5 in A cities and uh, probably 5.5 in B cities, uh, sorry, uh, five in B cities, uh, then you can now expect that we bid those cap rates. Yeah, okay. And then it still might be that we are not the number one. If they are coming a pension pension uh, plan from elsewhere uh, being desperate, um, we might even be not number one in that bid. Uh, but maybe let's see that times normalize. Okay. okay. Because just, just here one, one remark, I mean, from a from a yield spread perspective, I mean, what is better, buying uh, like you did in the past at six percent funding with uh, with four percent, you have spread of two hundred basis points, and or buying now at four and a half percent and funding with two percent, so you have a higher spread then. So you know what I mean. I think you would have the support from the capital market for much lower yields uh, on your investments. That's just my yes. feeling. Yes, we do. And, um, I mean, the spreads weren't even that big in, in older times because interest rates were at 45 and 5% including margin. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't forget. Yeah, okay. Uh, probably. So there might be uh, no positive leverage effect in the old times in some cases in the hot market. Yeah? yeah. And now we have those effects. And as I said in the last call, we use it as lee wind. We use it. Yeah. But it should not be the main reason to buy something. Yeah, okay. It's, it's very important for us. And, of course, it helps us. Uh, we look long-term, we look even further how such a, a shopping center will develop and how it could uh, look like after refinancing after 10 years when interest rates are back to maybe 10-year averages or so. So we look very bottom-up details and, and yeah. scenarios on that. But you're right, we, we can act, and we'll act if we find the right one. Okay, fair enough. Many thanks. Any more questions? There are no further questions on the phone line. Okay. And thank you very much. I wish all of you a nice uh, summer and uh, hear you back then in autumn. And for those who participate in Gdansk, um, yeah, I'm happy to see you there and show you one of our very nice assets there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.